match then. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. We're going to give it a few minutes or so just to make sure that everybody logs on. We, you know, we have it about just at 10 right now, so maybe just another minute or so. Um, before we really do begin, though, I just um, I want to thank Julia Leonard from the uh, communications team here at the Reef Foundation for really doing all this, the background work. And she's uh, kudos to, to Julia for all she does, but just also for really making sure that we are we're all heard and seen and that things are running smoothly. And I know we have a, a whole bunch of folks that are that are joining us today. So again, I just uh, I'm looking down at the numbers. I see them, you know, continuing to 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 grow. So just a a, a few more, like a, a minute or so. I'm glad we can't see the numbers because we're oh I can see the numbers. I haven't got any tissues to wipe me sweat away when I start getting nervous <laughs> now, Jackie. <laughs> All right. Well, just to be to be fair, even though I, I still see it, it starting to increase here, um, I'll uh, I'll start with the the more mundane things so that, that we, we have a great time for the conversation. Uh, so I'm Mark Bogosian. I am the director of the Quality of Life Grants Program at the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. And I am so happy to be here today with um, Ali and Josh. And uh, I just, before I introduce them, I just want to give a little bit of the background. I mean, we all are here today to talk about open inclusion uh, and the, the Simply Open Awards. But I want to give a little, you know, brief background because uh, they're going to do the, the majority of this fun stuff today is um, open inclusion is an inclusive research insight and design agency that is based in the UK and operates globally. And um, what we're here really today to do is talk about the open awards. Uh, so this is the simply open awards. And very briefly, it's a competition offering individuals with disabilities uh, the opportunity to make a two minute video that is focused on recognizing and sharing practical solutions across the disability community. And again, uh, I'm gonna let these guys talk about it because it's a whole lot of fun and you're gonna learn a whole lot. Uh, so before we jump into conversation, I do want to um, introduce Ali Ingersoll, who is, um, in addition to being a Reeve Foundation ambassador in um, North Carolina, she is a day trader, a disability strategy consultant. Um, she is Miss Wheelchair North Carolina 2022. Um, she's a writer, blogger, editor, public speaker, and um, I really urge you all to check out her incredible blog, The um, Quirky Quad Diaries, which, uh, incredible information and just uh, very quirky and fun to read. So thank you, Ali. It's really a pleasure to have you here. And Josh Winterskill is over in the UK joining us this morning. Um, and he is Open Inclusive Innovation Program Lead. So um, Josh, his background is in technology, you know, working in research, design, innovation, and new cutting edge uh, products and services, but um, really interesting, and maybe we'll have a chance to talk about this a little later too, but he is currently um, on the talent and development squad for Great Britain in Air Rifle. So uh, really, really exciting. So I, I just wanna kind of jump out of the way now, and um, I'm gonna kind of turn it over to Ali, but I just wanna ask Ali, so really, could you just tell us a little bit about both open inclusion and kind of how you came to work with the organization. Absolutely. First of all, I want to thank the Reef Foundation for putting on this incredible webinar. I love everyone at the Reef Foundation and just such amazing advocates in the community for so many of us with disabilities. I myself am a C6 quadriplegic. I was injured in a shallow water diving accident 
And I have spent the last um, 12 years, not just working professionally, but in disability advocacy. And, and how I really got involved with the Reef Foundation was a personal project of mine through health insurance advocacy, helping people uh, navigate the health insurance appeals process. And the Reef Foundation was a huge part in helping uh, me guide, guide me with information, um, writing articles, and uh, really pushing for change in legislation and advocacy around the country. And um, throughout my disability advocacy career, I really wanted to marry my two professional skills. So I started to get involved in um, disability inclusion and working with incredible organizations run by and for people with disabilities. That is very important and at the core of who I am that many of us are. And open, as you mentioned, Open Inclusion is a um, specialist inclusive research and design agency um, with over 20 years of experience working in the pan disability community. So cross disability for a range of disabilities. And at the core of what Open has done for a very long time and continues to do is working with incredible organizations and brands on making products and services more accessible, whether that is in the digital space, in the physical space, and working with people with disabilities through paid research opportunities um, for their valuable insights. Because as you know, many um, organizations are trying to make everything more accessible, but they can't do that without quality research. And people in the disability community who can tell them what's working, what's not working. So that's one element of what we do at Open Inclusion. And, and I work here in the United States to bring partnerships and um, just like and collaborations with the Reef Foundation for Open Inclusion and working on really exciting projects. Um, right now we're uh, diving into um, helping people with disabilities become their own freelancers um, to work how they want, when they want, um, with specific skill sets. So that's an exciting project we have on the books at the moment. And the Simply Open Awards, which I'm going to let um, Josh really uh, dive into. And, and I think what makes Open really different, um, in my opinion, and I say this uh, because I've worked with a lot of organizations, is that quite literally the entire staff and team at um, Open Inclusion, we all have a disability. So I think that's really important when you're working with anyone that we really showcase and we each understand our needs, which is very important. So we can offer those diverse insights to organizations, brands, partners, and so forth. Um, but since today is about the Simply Open Awards, um, I'm going to um, pass it off to uh, Josh a little bit to tell, uh, you know, to dive into the Simply Open Awards because he's a champion, has been working on this day in and day out for months. Yeah, oh my God, it feels like a lifetime, honestly. <laughs> um, and that, that's what Christine gets us and Ali to do is to work hard and deliver. And that's why I'm here. So, yeah, thanks, Ali, for the intro um, and, and Mark. And it, again, just to echo Ali, it's um, a real privilege to be here. And thanks for the, the Reef Foundation for allowing us the opportunity to be here today with you and kind of explain more about Open and the Simply Open Awards. So a little bit about me. Uh, so as you're gathered from my accent, I'm not American. Um, I actually just sp spoke to some Canadians on the call and asked if they were from America. And I it was a bit of a touchy subject, actually. Um, so I've it is. learned a real I've, I've learned a real lesson there straight away. So my uh, my knowledge geographically is slowly expanding, working with open as we start to build the business further afield, as Ali's just explained. Um, so, yeah, a little bit about me based in the UK. Um, I have a tech background so I when I was studying when I was younger I worked in software development and went to the University West of England and did IT management and business and then I graduated and then worked in the corporate world so I worked for Hewlett Packard uh, which you'll probably be very familiar with that organization and I worked for them for the best part of five years in uh, various technology roles and finished working for them in cyber security and then back in 2017, um, I was on holiday and with my disability, so I've got spinal muscular atrophy. Some of you may be aware of uh, disabilities like muscular dystrophy, which is very, very similar to SMA. Um, it's a neuromuscular condition. So I was born with my disability. And as I've got older, my muscle wastage has, the muscle wastage has, uh, is progressive, which has meant that I've gone from being able to walk as a child to now being in a wheelchair um, all day, every day, uh, relying on carers to do all of my personal care. Um, so 
that kind of gives you a little bit of background about me and kind of where I started educationally and then uh, work wise as well. And then in 2017, I was on holiday. And for a lot of you listening in, um, it may be more prevalent for some of you than others, but air travel is always quite a hot topic. And I know in America, it's a real issue. And in 2017, I was on a particular holiday and I had real issues with getting on and off an aircraft. And I ended up watching um, a gentleman who had quite a severe brain injury and didn't really have much use from his chest down. And he was a very large chap, uh, probably, you know, six foot two, best part of, uh, I don't know, over 120 kilos perhaps and trying to watch somebody like that get lifted into an aircraft was quite soul destroying and combined with the challenges that I have I decided actually we need to kind of put a stop to the way in which wheelchair passengers uh, or wheelchair users sorry uh, being treated and manhandled to get on and off aircraft so I then came away from that holiday and thought right we need to design something and I've actually designed a sling that wheelchair users can travel with that the assistants or the airline crew can use to lift you on and off the aircraft. And I was very lucky. I got some funding from the uh, uh, the founder of one of Europe's budget, a cheapest budget airline, EasyJet, and got some funding into the business. And I have been running with that now since 2018. And of course, lo and behold, uh, COVID came along and the business went on pause because the travel industry just grinded to a halt. And that got me thinking about what I was doing with the business, but also where could I make my services more useful to other organizations, which is how the tie came in with Open Inclusion. So um, Open Inclusion, as um, Ali mentioned, um, is made up of uh, the disabled community. And what Christine has done is within the UK, we have a panel and it's made up of a range of people with disabilities and lived experiences or perspectives of disability or access needs. And I got parachuted in to look after mobility and dexterity um, because of my condition. And I was advising them as a consultant for you know two to four hours a week. And after a year of working with them, Christine decided to say, hey, Josh, um, we've got these really exciting awards coming up. Um, You've been doing some consultancy with us, and we're also looking at building out a technology company. And how do you fancy coming to join and working for us? And at the time, um, I was I had my business where it was and I thought, okay, I've got some wider time to give to Christine and the team. So I um, politely accepted that. And here we are today. Um, I've been working on the awards now since January of this year and um, yeah go into a bit more detail about the awards in a minute but that's just how I came to be part of open inclusion and a bit about me and my business and my disability. Christine Heppel just so we keep referring to Christine she is our boss she is in Geneva the team is global and she's just a beautiful human being that I hope that we, we get a chance to do a webinar with her but she's this incredible knack for just collecting um, people that have a similar interests and values and, 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 you know, the shared passion and mission. So, you know, I, I, you know, when Christine watches this, I give her full credit for being a fantastic connector and uh, with a, you know, beautiful organization. So do you want me to dive in now, Mark, and talk about the awards, Ali? That yeah, would be, yeah, that yeah would be great. Super. Fantastic. So to, to, to try and explain this simply, if we to set some context, if we go back to the very start. So uh, Christine had a very good relationship with uh, an organization in India called Enable India. And two years ago, in 2019, they decided to launch a program called Project Discovery Awards. And the idea of the Project Discovery Awards in India was to reach out to the disabled community across the country and get them to record uh, solutions that they have created to enable them to overcome access or exclusion barriers. So often what we find in um, low to middle income countries or also known as developing countries, I don't know if we can use that term anymore, um, 
But effectively, what we find is that because they're largely disproportionately affected, access to support, for instance, to have medical equipment um, and mobility transport and vice versa can actually be very difficult to access. And so what you find in those communities is they naturally become innovators, right? So they're having to find solutions to overcome the barriers because other people can't help them overcome them. They have to figure out how to do that for themselves. And it's been quite remarkable. So since they launched the awards in the first year, they got 500 videos from the, the community in India. And with the success, they ended up getting sponsorship from Google. And last year, um, they ended up having over 2000 applications. And it's proved to be so much of a hit um, that now those the winners from the Project Discovery Awards now get the opportunity to go to uh, Vienna to present their solutions to global accessibility leaders from around the world. And because of the success from the awards and the relationship that Christine had with Enable India, and given the passion that Christine has, um, it was very much, well, we don't want this to just be a thing in India. This can quite easily be a global um, awards program. And so what Christine decided to do was agree with Enable India about giving us six countries to start with. So we've got the UK and Ireland, uh, the US and Canada and Australia and New Zealand. So effectively, Christine has tasked me to replicate what is the Project Discovery Awards and create it the Simply Open Awards and then roll, uh, roll those awards out across those six countries. And so here we are today where we want to get people like yourselves in the US and Canada to make videos of solutions that you perhaps have they might be solutions that you've made for yourself to overcome barriers that you faced with uh, accessing employment it could be getting around the home it could be to do with communication or any barriers that you have with education so it could be something that you've created yourself or it might be a product perhaps that you've purchased um, and modified in a way that has become that you've made it accessible for your needs often we find all of these wonderful solutions and we we, we go to think they're going to be really useful for us and we realize they're not and then we have to adapt them in some way so what we want people to do is share those solutions with us um, in a two minute video that outlines what your solution is, why you created it, who it's for and how you made it effectively. And all you do is you submit your video in to us and we will then judge it later in the year. And there will be a round of judging and you will then get the opportunity to be potentially be shortlisted in one of five categories. And there is up to, there's 25,000 pounds worth of prizes available in dollars. I'm not too sure what the, the exchange rate is at the moment. I believe it's in the um, 30s. So. Roughly. 30, 30 odd thousand dollars. Yeah. So it's there's quite a chunky prize amount there. And what's really great is that as the finalists, you'll be put forward into the global discovery awards with Enable India and other other organizations that are running the same awards in their country. So it's almost like an Olympics. So you win your regional or national um, section and then you get put forward to the globals. And if you win at the globals, you will get the opportunity to fly out to Vienna and present your solution like I mentioned earlier, to accessibility leaders. And that is a fully paid trip, including the option to take a carer away with you. Uh, and of course you get the prize money as well. So it's a really fantastic opportunity to get exposure of your solutions and also share it with the community. I think that's really what this is all about is for other people that are in the same situation as you uh, to learn about the solution that you've created so they can see that video and then perhaps make the solution for themselves to benefit. Uh, I think we're, we're often, we're obviously a, a group of people where we end up creating solutions for ourselves and we don't even necessarily know we've created a solution. We just naturally have done it because we've just found a different way of doing something. And um, by being able to share that to a community is really powerful. Okay. So I think, Yes, mm -hmm. go for it. Can I add to that, Josh, too? You yep. know, in the U.S., we call them hacks. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm involved in a lot of disability uh, Facebook groups. And oftentimes, I mean, I can't tell you how many times a month people come up and said, how do I pull my, I, I'm a quadriplegic, how do I pull my groceries into a door? Somebody makes a video or has a photo, and we share it in our private groups together, but they don't get shared with the world. So this is a very cool opportunity that we'll have a, you know, a public global repository where people can use these solutions to share and be celebrated for ideas, which is very unique 
and very cool. And, and I'm sure you'll touch on this, Josh, but for the, you know, the NGO that has the most number of submissions uh, for their members also has a chance to win a few thousand dollars as well to, you know, do with, uh, you know, as they please. So it's, it's a win-win for all. You get attention and recognition for such a very cool idea. And it's not just, you don't have to have a disability. It can be a carer. It can be a friend. It can be somebody you know with a disability that can submit a solution as well. Yeah, no, that's, that's, thanks for bringing that through, Ali. So I think what's really important around the NGO side is that the more we can get the, the more the NGOs can get their communities to submit their applications, they then get totaled up. And then the one with the, the, the two NGOs with the most amount of applications from their community will be awarded two and a half thousand pounds. So three thousand dollars and then one thousand pounds, which is about one thousand three, one thousand four hundred dollars. So there's a nice small incentive there for NGOs to you know help spread the word. And then lastly, the other thing to mention as well is with the awards, there is a, uh, a, a wildcard category where our sponsors um, have the opportunity to call out any solutions where they feel that they are kind of, um, they stand out in a particular way. That's really down to the sponsors to decide and they can award up to 500 pounds of additional prize money to an applicant, which is really, really exciting. Now, in terms of our sponsors that we've got so far, we've got uh, Eli Lilly, which is a, a large global pharmaceutical company. We have AMV BBDO, which are a global marketing branding agency, uh, which many of you may not have heard of, but effectively they are brought in to help large organizations like your McDonald's of the world to do uh, marketing. And then we've also landed another sponsor, which is Fiverr, uh, which some of you may or may not know of, uh, which is that digital marketplace where you can go and um, pay somebody to do lots of development, web development like and freelance designs. Gig. It's like the freelance, freelance gig, it. gig economy. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. That's So So those are our sponsors to date. Um, and the applications go live on the 19th of May. Um, you can view the website now um, and you can actually, I think there is the option for you to submit an application now. I'm just letting you know. So it's not exactly closed off if you wanted to submit something now you can but more widely it the known date is the 19th of may for submissions now i just wanted to give you some key dates i know um i think there was a a question for me to give you some actual dates here on the call so 19th of may as i've mentioned is the launch date for applications they do close on the 2nd of september so you do have the best part of 12 weeks or so to um record your solutions and get them submitted. If you've got any problems or you're unsure, um, you can reach out to us. Uh, our email address is simplyopenawards at openinclusion.com. Uh, you can access that via the website anyway. Then there will be a round of judging, which will start the middle of September. That will go on for about three weeks. And then there will be a round of, of final further judging. So we've got two rounds of judging. It's the initial screening and then um, a second round of judging to get to our finalists. And the finalists or the winners, in fact, will be announced on December 3rd, uh, which is the International Day of Persons with a Disability. Uh, on that day, we are planning on hosting a live event, which you will be able to dial in and we'll make sure that the Re Foundation get those details out to you nearer the time so that you can come along and join the uh, event on December 3rd. And then the next really big date, if, uh, if one of you are lucky enough to be shortlisted, will be the 23rd of February, which is to go to Vienna and showcase your solution. So those are the key critical dates um, for you as applicants to be aware of. And they're all on the website as well. Everything you need to they know is, is, is on the website. So could, could you guys give um, some examples? Of... I was, you, okay, were, great, you were great. taking I'd the word that I out. Um, I mean, I have some on the top of my head, Josh. Do you want Do you want me to take some and then you take them from simple to technical? Yeah, go on. You you, you give yours. I'm going to take a spot of water and then uh, I'll give you, I'll give, I'll give Rob on mine. Yep. Okay. So um, a few years ago, it can be very simple to very technical. So there's a gentleman with cerebral palsy in India who had mobile dexterity um, challenges and he couldn't write with a pencil and I have I have paralyzed hands so I can relate and you know you know in developing countries we have a lot of mobility aids here in the United States but he didn't have them there 
So he literally, he quite literally took a pencil and stuck it through an orange. So the orange allowed him to have a little bit mobi more mobility in how he wrote on a piece of paper. That's a very simple example. Another example is a gentleman in India. He wanted, uh, he had a wheelchair and he wanted to drive his tractor. And he quite literally adapted his tractor to make it accessible for his wheelchair. So it could be very simple and it could be, you know, very complicated. For example, you know, I have, um, you know, a, a whole computer accessible setup. And as Josh mentioned, I didn't create something from scratch, but I used, um, for example, I have a, a giant keyboard with, um, that's used for people that are, have a visual impairment. And I type upside down with my knuckles and I have a giant mouse. And I just took a bunch of bits and bobs and they work for me and I put it together to make an accessible setup. So, you know, it can be as simple or as complicated. However, one thing that's really important about the awards, these are to celebrate our ideas and share them together. So these are ideas that are non-commercial. They don't have IP attached behind them and you're willing to share it. If you have a highly AI, you know, tech-based solution that you wanna get funded by a venture capitalist, these awards are not for you. This is just to celebrate all of, you know, what we've made. And, Josh, I'll, I'm sure you have a million other examples, but that is my, those are my key examples that I love. Yeah, I mean, um, we have, I, I'll give you my example, actually, uh, which you'll make, you, you can, you can see it on the website, you'll see there's kind of like an illustration done. And actually, that was of one of my solutions that I created at home. So one of the problems I have here in the UK is as a powered wheelchair user, accessing certain equipment at the gym to do exercise is very challenging. And of course, there's a cost associated to go with the gym. And there's also a cost associated to take an assistant with you to the gym. And it soon realized that if I could do exercises at home without going to the gym, I save myself time, I save myself the cost of a subscription to a gym. And it, my family said to me, Josh, you're, you know, you're, you're not going to a gym at the moment because of COVID. And so what else can we do to help you do your exercises? And literally, I'm not even joking, two hooks in the ceiling, a metal bar along the top, and I attached a band, which you can strap around your wrist or your legs. And effectively, it lifts my arms and my legs up in the air. And then I can move my arms and legs freely, which I can't do in a wheelchair. So I can work all my shoulders, my back and my legs. And it literally is a band with a bar with some hooks in the ceiling. It literally cost me no more than 10 pounds to do and I can do everything that I need to do at home so that is a very creative effective simple solution that we're kind of looking for people to share um, another example we've seen is uh, there was a gentleman in the US who uh, is very good when it comes to 3d printing and one of the <laughs> Honestly, it's fascinating. So he is unable to feed treats to his dog when he's out for a walk uh, because he can't move his arms. And what he's done is he's created a, a 3D printed dog dispenser, which he's got a button on the side of his chair and he fills the that his carer fills up the dispenser with treats. And then when he's out, if he wants to give the dog a treat, he hits the button on, near his joystick on his chair and the treat drops out onto the floor so he can give a treat to his dog something so simple yet there's so many wheelchair users out there that can't feed their dogs because they haven't got the, the strength of the dexterity and yet if they can get a 3d printer he can share the file with you you can print the the, the dispenser and you can get it made for you and and feed your dog so that's again another very um straightforward simple solution we also have uh, a person that i've seen who was painting their house and he has no arms and he had a he had a paintbrush and he put an adapter in his mouth and connected the paintbrush to the adapter in his mouth and he was able to paint his walls and what he was doing is because he had an elevated wheelchair he was adjusting the height so he could get higher up and lower down so actually the adaption was the adapter in his mouth that he connected the paintbrush to to enable him to paint his house so i thought that was pretty cool right so it's it's very simple solutions that enable people to do things independently and overcome the barriers that they're faced with so hopefully that gives you just a couple more examples of of, of solutions and you know as you're talking josh i'm just thinking on the larger global and you know inclusive you know inclusive scale of why we really want these to be public as well is let's take as an example the ada 91 with the curb cutouts right 
originally for people that are wheelchair users, but who uses them now? Not just wheelchair users, uh, mothers with baby carriages, delivery drivers. So if companies and organizations can see some of these solutions, adapt them, you know, make these products and services, they're not just accessible for people with disabilities, but for the broader, you know, um, commercial, uh, um, you know, for everyone that's inclusive for all, this can really fuel, you know, inspiration for other companies to make products. So, you know, for example, with, you know, Alexa, right, originally created for people with disabilities in mind, now everyone uses it and becomes a commercial solution. What does a commercial solution mean? It, it can be made at a lower cost, so it's more affordable because many of us know, even, you know, let's take active hands, for example, right? They allow us to strap our hands in and do exercise um, with a lot of, you um, different adaptive equipment but they're not cheap because you know the you know the broader community doesn't need them on a daily basis so you know when i think about these awards too i think down the road uh, how are companies going to take inspiration from what we create to make something that's lower cost and more accessible and usable for all i have said it better myself that's unbelievable <laughs> i just popped I say in no my more. head <laughs> Yeah. Um, just to, to let everyone know, um, if you follow uh, Open Inclusion social media channels over the next couple of weeks, you'll start to see content coming out from me and Ali um, and a couple of others of the solutions that we've created to give you an idea of what it is that we're looking for. Um, I've also done some recordings with some top tips on what you need to record, how to record things not to do, things to do uh, to make it easier for you when you get around to wanting to record your solution. So follow our socials uh, and that will be the best way to see some of that coming out on social media in the next couple of weeks. Great. So, I, so you're, you're go going to be accepting um, submissions from both individuals and also organizations. So in a lot of ways, you're also encouraging organizations to have, you know, their members or, you know, groups of people that they may, you know, kind of oversee to submit through them so that they also could receive uh, some kind of financial benefit as well. Is that correct? It, pretty much that what we want is the NGOs to encourage the individuals within your community to submit their applications. And then on the drop down list, you will have the option to select that NGO. So as as the Refoundation are coming on board, uh, you'll be added into the drop down list for May the 19th and you can select the refoundation as your application and then at the end it will all be reviewed and then we'll tally that up and that's how we will then assess um, who's the the best performing NGO. Does that make sense Mark? It does so what what about so I know Ali is um, you know one of our ambassadors through let's say North Carolina where you are you when when we award a quality of life grant there you then will go and work with the organizations and share information etc so would you be encouraging let's say you know a quality of life grantee perhaps to get their members involved and they could go through them or would it be best to come through the reef foundation i think it's kind of a multi-pronged approach so for example you know the global the umbrella is the reef foundation but organizations awarded the quality of life grants um, have a lot of members that have a lot of interesting solutions already. So working individually to get these local nonprofits and NGOs in the state to um, encourage their members to submit to the competition, but it is under the umbrella of the Reef Foundation. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, great. And I will tell you from a point of logis logistics accessibility, Josh's work, he rebuilt the entire website. I mean, really accessible, this website. And I actually went to submit my video the other day. And after you make your video, it, it took me 10 minutes. It really is accessible. And, and I have full props and, and like waving and clapping in the air, you know, quadriplegic clap. Josh, you did a brilliant job on that. Oh, thanks. And I know you lost a lot of sleep over that. So I just want to give public recognition on that. So it's a constant group effort. We're all working together to you know, for the, the general, you know, concept and, and pushing forward and inclusion for all. Absolutely. So I'm just looking at the, the next question that we have here. 
uh, on the list, and it's uh, about the, what makes the Simply Awards, Simply Open Awards, so unique. And I think in a, in a lot of cases we've kind of, I think we've kind of covered that. Um, but just to reiterate what Ali mentioned earlier is that it's not for entrepreneurs. It's not for people that want to commercialize. It, they could potentially be commercialized afterwards, um, but you can't you can't have it where you've got the intention to commercialize now where you're worried about intellectual property. Um, and I think what makes this so unique for me is as being an entrepreneur, um, I've, I see it from both sides. And what we find is there's a lot of people that don't necessarily want to be entrepreneurs, but want to share their solutions and want to be recognized for creating something that's beneficial for others. And so I don't believe that I've seen an awards program out there that really harnesses um, innovation within the disability community that isn't necessarily there for commercial um, gains, whereas this is very grassroots, it's from the heart, it's very raw, um, you know, it's not the videos don't need to be top quality, they just need to be recorded and submitted. So it's not this kind of, you know, I'm the best, I've got the best video. It's not It's not about that at all. It's just purely about sharing what you've created. So I think that's really what is gonna hopefully make these awards really unique. And what is really important to me is that through our videos, the more we can educate our sponsors and organizations to make them to do the right thing. So the sponsors are already doing the right things because they're listening, they're here, and they want to see what you're doing, but effectively they really want to be educated. Um, and I think there's been a message in here somewhere from Caroline um, who mentioned uh, a little bit about um, how at the end we should from the awards to make a documentary about the videos to help educate the healthcare system about what's going on that's exactly what we what we want to do and we will be doing that but in order for us to do that we need the videos so please get submitting <laughs> i mean that's a really good point josh you bring up because you created um an accessible solution for adaptive workouts and on a personal level, I have been fighting um, publicly Blue Cross and Blue Shield on adaptive exercise equipment here in the United States. So most health and very briefly, most health insurance plans do not cover adaptive exercise equipment for long-term wheelchair users. They do not differentiate between a treadmill and a piece of equipment for a wheelchair user. They don't. It's an outdated, antiquated policy. I have been fighting, continue to fight with legislation. But videos like these and showing the insurance companies in the United States that if you make a solution like this and approve it as medically necessary, this will be a lot less, this will cost you a lot less, reduce long-term secondary complications for wheelchair users, you know, in the end, increase your profits, increase, you know, improve our quality of life and our standard of life. And we can live a life with a little bit more dignity and respect and, you know, be able to, you know, really contribute. I had to throw that in there because I really love Josh's idea. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's interesting. Um, in the chat, Caroline also wrote something about this would really be an awesome concept for schools, mm -hmm. you know, science competitions, you know, from kindergarten to the college level. And, you know, we work with a number of assistive technology organizations that do go into the schools to teach them how to make kind of individualized, you know, assistive technology devices for, you know, for people in their communities. And I, I just love the fact of, of bringing something similar like this to, to even a school where, you know, you're teaching the community how to participate and the community then really becomes part of a, a greater community. And I, I just think it's such a win-win for everyone. So, Caroline, thank you for that great comment in the in the. It really is a great idea. Every and I think also when you know, Josh touched on what's really unique about the awards, I'd love to add to that that it's not just one disability community; it's the pan disability community. I know they use the term more in Europe. In the United States, we use cross disability, so it could be hard of hearing, blind, low vision, neurodiverse, um, mobility impairment. So I think that's another aspect that makes it really unique as well and inclusive. Um, and I would, I know we have questions coming up shortly, but I would be remiss not to just touch on open inclusion in general for just, just a moment that, you know, we do offer a lot of really interesting co-creation projects, survey studies, diary studies, 
where we work with these brands, with a lot of brands to make products and services more accessible. And all you have to do is join the Simply Open, um, open Inclusion community. Um, I'll put the link in the chat. And then you, you can be, you'll be contacted when research, paid research opportunities come up. If they're interesting to you and they're beautiful to you, you can go ahead and participate. If not, that's fine. But also signing up the community as we, we um, launch this huge freelance um, project over the next several months, um, and you wanna get involved with us in any capacity, that is great. So I will, I will put that in the chat as well. Great. And, and also on the website I put up, it's, um, um, you know, the open inclusion community. There's also the button to, for the awards as well. So you can join the community and um, click on the awards. Great. And I also just, I want to encourage people uh, to put their questions either in the Q&A or in the chat. And, you know, we're happy to uh, answer those as well. A new message in the chat. Oh, great. Okay, so Ali did just put the link in the um, in the chat box, and I know there were a f and I I haven't had a chance to go back to them, but coming into this, you know, some folks had asked some questions, um, and I'm just wondering if we we could. Put I've those. got some of those up, Mark. You, yeah, oh, great. I okay. Do. You know, one of them was, what about submitting care hacks? Uh, we have some great ideas and sharing them, they kickstart better ones. Yes, Mary, absolutely. You know, you, some, you know, carers, friends, you know, people we know with disabilities, um, the more the merrier, as they say. <laughs> and then so I'll go down some of the other questions. Um, one question, is there a website to show best places to travel as a wheelchair user? Josh, take it away. <laughs> so I don't, um, I don't blog around where to travel as a wheelchair user. I do lots in the aviation industry. However, uh, the one, the best person for you probably to reach out to within the U.S. is a uh, is a gentleman called Corey Lee. Uh, I would you can find the him. words out of my mouth. Yeah, he's probably the best person for you to reach out to. Uh, so that's Curb, Curb Free with Corey Lee. Uh, lots of really useful stuff on his social media there. So do check him out. You also have uh, wheelchairtraveler.org or wheelchairtravel.org. Um, that's run by a gentleman called John Morris. Uh, again, another very influential uh, person in the US uh, around travel as a wheelchair user. You can find lots of really fantastic resources uh, within John's website. That's probably the site that I would recommend to go to, first of all, if you want really good specific blog content around traveling as a I'm wheelchair user. I'm going to put user. that in the chat. What, what is the website again? Uh, well, I think it's wheelchairtravel.org. Um, I will just double check it whilst we're on the call. Um, there's also John. another really great one too, um, which is Wheel the World. They do a lot of yeah. other, I only reason I know this is I'm working with them now. I am 39 and I turn 40 next year. Hard to say that in public, but I am. And um, I have been saving up and working very hard to go to a trip to Costa Rica, but I want to make it very special. And every single detail with what the room, the bed height, where I can go, accessible vans, and they are working with me on every detail. So they really are, um, you know, I highly recommend them as well. All right, let me go. I'll put that in the chat. I think I've got the right one. Oops, that's a long, a long link. There you, there you go. Um, some other questions we have. Um, is there any accessible apps that are a true measure of accessibility? What is useful information for businesses to include in marketing and accessibility? And how do we find accessible businesses and community? Is there uh, any publications for reference? That is a great question. I will kind of leave it open to the three of us. I mean, Mark, you know, working at the Reed Foundation, I'm, I mean, I know the Reed Foundation has a ton of resources. There are a lot of organizations that do. And, and you know, I find when I'm looking for accessibility, I start with, you know, um, you know, the resource center, like the Reed Foundation, they give me a contact. And then, you know, I make a phone call or I make an email. I will say this, that, 
you know, whenever you're poking around for true accessibility or anything, you're poking around, you have to be your own self-advocate. So people will help give you the, people off, I often call or, or, or get an email or, or make a phone call. Somebody recommends me a personal organization and then I just have to be a little bit pleasantly persistent, as I say, and I follow up. Yeah, exactly. I would say, you know, we um, at the Reed Foundation have our information specialists who really are the, fantastic. The, yeah, absolutely. You you call them, you email them, you you know can send them a message through the website, and they they have a, a wealth of knowledge about everything. Uh, they are definitely the folks to to reach out to, and they'll be able to get you lists, uh, state lists, and other other types of uh, resource information, fact sheets, all of that. So definitely reach out to them. Um, I'm just gonna answer uh, one of the questions, uh, the first one, which is around any successful apps that are a true measure of accessibility. Um, there is uh, an, uh, an organization called brettapproved.com uh, that's ran by a gentleman in America called Brett. And what he tried to do was create a platform where people could leave reviews of accommodation based on their disability. So effectively ratings would be left on that accommodation based on your profile. So if you selected that you're a wheelchair user, the reviews that you would see on that accommodation would be reviews or rated based on you as a wheelchair user. So you knew that the reliability of that review is appropriate based on your disability effectively, which I thought was a, a really smart uh, a smart solution. So do check, do check Brett approved out if you, if you can. Um, and then in answer to the third one, this is quite an interesting one uh, around how do we find accessible businesses and communities. And in a, in a lot of cases, it, it's really hard to find. And one of the reasons as to why we're building the Simply Open community going forward is that we want to create a community where people with a whole range of disabilities can come and create a community where you can share um, accessible, accessible businesses or uh, communities that you can be part of where you can get information that's relevant to you very quickly and accessibly because I think often we find nowadays we see so much on social media and you see a post on Facebook you might see a post on Twitter and you think oh that's brilliant I'll save that and then you forget about it and all of a sudden you've got loads of saved posts across all different types of social media and you're not able to make your way through them very succinctly it can be quite a bit of a pain in the backside and so hopefully what we're going to do through our community is consolidate all of that into a place where you can share all of that information in a repository uh, and easily access. So I think that will, I think that's going to help in the long term to uh, make it easier to find accessible business, well, certainly accessible communities. And then with the research side and uh, with what we're doing um, with uh, the Simply Open platform is connecting businesses with the community. And I think what, we'll, what you'll be able to do is by being part of the community with us is really helping shape those businesses to obviously become more accessible. So you're going to be right at the heart of it if you come along and join our community. Yeah, and I'd also like to add that on the Reed Foundation website, we do have a map where actually you, you type in your zip code right. and it will give you specific um, organizations in that area that um, both are accessible, that work in this area and provide services. So um, I would really urge everyone to go to the website and uh, really it's as easy as typing in your zip code and, and finding those types of organizations that are right in your area. And there's kind of, I, I wouldn't call this a secret, but it's a really unknown resource, even by myself several years ago. And now I'm chairman of the board of a center for independent living, but centers for independent living, they are um, funded by rehab dollars um, from, you know, in the seventies. And there's over 400 centers for independent living. And what they do is they work with people in the pan or cross disability community. And they have what they call community inclusion specialists. And anyone with a disability can call for free and they're quite literally will connect you with the right people and the right organizations and the right um, the vocational rehab, whether it's government, private or, or businesses. And they will literally, you know, work with you every day till you're completely independent or 
you know, you continue to reach out to them. So they're a really great resource, all centers for independently. Some are, are larger than others, but you know, there are 400, so they are in your state. And if you go to the um, ILRU, you know, independent living movement, there's also a great resource there as well. Yeah, and, and just to piggyback on that, every state and territory in the United States has an assistive technology program. So they're, they're the state AT program. So you contact your state AT program or, or territory AT program, and they're able to connect you with loan closets and a whole bunch of other services that really connect to assistive technology. So that's also fits right into this realm as well. Right, and just doing an extended friend and pin element or the Re Foundation. Sometimes you just need one connector, right? You have that one resource, and then they'll continually provide you resources that you can reach out to. Yeah. So I have a quick question. So back to the videos, because I just love this whole concept. I, I um, it, you know, two minutes can seem like a lifetime when you're doing a video or it can seem like a very short time. What if, have, have people commented on, you know, what, what, or have you seen, it, is, it, are, the, are the videos really coming in at two minutes? Is it, is it cut off at a time? So, you know, what are the parameters around that? Or is that just Great a question. guideline? Yep, um, I'll, I'll, I'll take that one. So effectively, there is no, when you record it, you record it on your phone and then you have to upload it as a file or from your phone or whatever device you're using. So effectively, you have to make sure that you, your recording for your video is uh, no more than two minutes long. So when you submit your entry, if your video is over two minutes long, the application will go through. But when we pick it up, if we notice that your video is over two minutes long, it won't be included in the entry. So it will just be deleted. So it's really important that you make sure that your video is under two minutes. What you can do when you are recording your video um, is that there's four components to making up your video. You can either record it in one clean swoop in two minutes, or you can record them in multiple videos. So you can submit up to four files. Um, and as long as those four files collectively are under two minutes, that's fine. So you can have one file that's a minute long and then three that are 10 to 15 seconds. That's absolutely fine. Just they cannot collectively be more than two minutes. And that's not to penalize anyone because one has to remember that if we, you know, when we get hundreds of submissions and this keeps growing, it's the judges that have to review all of these videos and it's at their time. So, you know, we're trying to find a happy middle ground. So basically, if all of you end up submitting a load of videos, you basically give me a really big headache because it means I need to go and find more judges and more time. So, you know, I really want you to go crazy, but let's not know. <laughs> I'll, let, um, I'll have to sort that out. But no, um, you, you, you got a good point there. Ali. And could you tell us a little bit about the judges that, that do look at these? Yeah, I mean, Ali, do you want me to go on that one? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so we, we've got a range of um, judges coming through from uh, universities. So we've got a couple of judges from the New York University of Occupational Therapy. We have uh, our sponsors, they're going to be committing judges. So you're going to be getting a range of judges from very senior C-suite execs down to, you know, general employees within an organization that are judging these applications. And the reason for that is that we want to get not only do we want judges with disabilities to obviously be judging the awards, the whole idea behind this is to educate the judges more widely around the solutions that are coming through. Um, so our judging panel will be very broad. Uh, we also have uh, other organizations coming in. So we are allowing NGOs to um, submit judges, uh, as judging requests. So if you would like to get involved um, from the Re Foundation, then you can absolutely do that. If you've got a couple of members that you want to judge, uh, then you know we're more than happy to facilitate that. So on the website, if you want to judge at the bottom, you can submit and make a request. So we are getting influencers, key influencers within the disability arena to become judges, because I think that in turn encourages other people with disabilities to apply into the awards because they know that their solution might actually get judged by an influencer that they follow. So again, it's a really important step that we're looking to add into our judging panel for the awards. 
That's brilliant bringing in the influencers. Uh, I really love that. that more, and there's more opportunity for exposure through that. So I, mm. I, I think that that's super. Yeah, I'm still waiting for one judge to submit their application, but she's not done it yet. She's looking right at me, but never mind. Ali, that's you. (laughs) We'll make you a judge. I think we'll make Ali a judge for these awards. Um, And because I know a lot of people follow Ali and watch her videos. So we'll uh, we'll definitely have Ali as a judge this year. And and Missy actually on chat pointed out something interesting. And thank you. We're always looking to improve. I was on Open Inclusion website. Um, and just want to let you guys know that Twitter and Facebook links are swapped. Yep. So you Thank click, you. Yep. There we go. Thank you very much. We are perfectly imperfect human beings. We are always improving and, <laughs> and working on things day by day, which is great, right? Yep. No, that's perfect. Thank you so much. I'll get that changed straight away. So I just, you know, as we're kind of coming to the end, um, I know that all of the information is on the website. And the, I guess the two most important dates are, um, you know, May 19th is when it, the site goes live, but final submission date is September 2nd. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, great. I just want to make sure that everybody has those dates so they know what their, what their time frame is. Um, mm-hmm. And then if everybody keep your calendars open for February 23rd, just in case you're going to Vienna. Wow. I want really to go to cool. Vienna. I know, really. <laughs> I, I mean, really, I want to go to Vienna desperately. <laughs> All right, let's see if there are any other questions here. Um, so really, before we, we do sign off, I just want to, any last minute um you know, anything that you want to share, make sure that people are really aware of or um, any any thoughts you want to impart? Josh, I'll take it first. Yeah, I mean, all I want to impart is for just people to have fun and just enjoy it. And, you know, don't be scared that if you have a solution and you think, oh, it's going to be no good or it's not worth submitting, it absolutely is. That's the whole idea. Um, so I really just want everybody to feel confident and be encouraged to share whatever solutions they have into the awards because no solution is a stupid solution. Couldn't agree more. And I mean, to affect systemic change, it starts right here. It starts with these conversations at Open Inclusion, we call, we, we call these people inclusive change makers, right? And creative renegades of people that want to question why, how, what's not working, how do we make changes? And it's conversations like these, competitions like the Simply Open Awards, Open Inclusion, the Christopher Reeve Foundation, constantly collaborating, working together to affect greater change. And, and, you know, systemic change takes a while. It does, right? And sometimes you have to work within a broken system. Um, and, you know, we have to learn how to do that. But I think with the Simply Open Awards that Josh is really spearheading, and I am just his co-pilot helping him bring these into the United States, and I can do whatever I can. Um, this is such a great way to, uh, to showcase your, your beautiful solutions and, uh, you know, your in, ingenuity. Excellent. Great. Um, For those who um, signed up for this that were not able to watch today, we will be posting this on the Reed Foundation website. And for those of you that are on, if you know of somebody who you think would really benefit from watching this, um, it will be posted. So I encourage everybody to also, you know, check out once we have it archived. And I do know a lot of people watch it archived, right? It's 10 in yeah. the morning, a lot of people in their middle of the day, and then and then you get up there. Because I always watch so many webinars after. I'm like, oh, I've got to put that on my to-do list, and I watch it when I'm in bed at nighttime. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I again, I want to thank you both for, for your time. Thank you for sharing this incredible opportunity. And I, I really encourage everyone out there and even those who aren't here now that are going to be watching this to please submit your your videos overwhelm josh as much as you can because i just think this is such a great great project that that really helps um and and can just get these ideas out there to really help each other so um and huge kudos to the reed foundation i mean you guys all the thank you for all the work you do and today's event and look forward to working with you and collaborating on so many projects yeah absolutely 
All right. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, so everyone. Much. Thanks.